Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Mining Data Analytics Podcast. In this episode, episode five, we're going to talk about the mempool and transaction fees. Before we get started, I uh, just want to talk about Blockware Solutions real quick. So Blockware Solutions is a vertically integrated Bitcoin mining company. They have a lot of turnkey solutions for Bitcoin mining. So if you're new to Bitcoin mining, you want to get into it, you want to stack sats by owning ASICs, Blockware can help you buy ASICs and then host it at one of their hosting facilities. So definitely check them out when you can at BlockwareSolutions.com. But all right, let's go ahead and kick this off. So this is something called the mempool. What is the mempool? So the mempool is basically where all valid Bitcoin transactions wait to be added to a block in the blockchain. And so these transactions that are sitting in the Bitcoin mempool, which means memory pool, are ordered by something called sats per virtual byte. And so this is basically a way for, for miners to select the transactions that paid them the most in fees. So blocks in Bitcoin currently have a weight limit of four megabytes. And so this means that not all transactions in the mempool can be included in every block. So miners are automatically selecting the transactions that pay the most Bitcoin, the most sats per byte um, that the transaction uh, is. And so here again, we're looking back at the mempool. Uh, we can see two very clear spikes here. The first one is the 2017 bull run when Bitcoin was just going crazy. A lot of people were, you know, going on a Coinbase, going on to Binance, buying Bitcoin, uh, sending it to their hardware wallet, their ledger, Trezor, sending it to other exchanges to, to buy alts. There was just a lot of activity on the Bitcoin network and therefore the mempool got extremely crowded. The second uh, big spike here was the 2021 uh, bull run that we just had. Um, the mempool didn't really see too much activity after you know spring of 2021, um, but it did see a decent amount of activity at, at the beginning of 2021. And so I kind of created this short little cycle outlining you know how Bitcoin kind of appears to go through um, a, a fee cycle or, or a scaling cycle. So if we want to start in the bottom left corner, we can see that, you know, as time, as scarcity, as adoption and price increase, meaning, you know, over time, there's more Bitcoin halvings, meaning less coins are being issued. And over time, more people are beginning to understand what Bitcoin is and they decide to buy some and hold some. Um, as this happens, and sometimes it happens rather rapidly, like it does during bull runs, uh, fees on the network increase. This is due to users or, or people buying Bitcoin and holding Bitcoin, uh, just you know, trying to transact on the network, sending it to their cold storage, et cetera. And so when we have these, these periods where fees on the network are increasing, there's a lot of demand for cheaper settlement. And so, for example, back in 2017, during the peak, you know, it may have costed $20, $30, $40 to send a relatively small Bitcoin transaction. This was very expensive and, and it caused a lot of people to demand cheaper settlement. And so what this ended up doing was it incentivized individuals, developers, and companies to develop more scaling technologies. And so these scaling technologies include things like SegWit, uh, exchanges, batching transactions, the Lightning Network, the Liquid Network, all of these new technologies are basically enabling people to send Bitcoin in a more cheap and effective manner, and even sometimes a faster manner. And so after you know we had a, a large amount of fees, we, it caused us to cause the whole um, network to develop these scaling technologies, and that ultimately led to, to fees decreasing. And so next time around this cycle, when scarcity gets even lower, time continues to press on, adoption continues to grow, the fees may not necessarily uh, increase as much with the same amount of activity. So activity could go up you know, 10x, but maybe fees will only go up 
two X from, from where they were back in 2017. Okay. Here's another very interesting metric. This one is the fees percentage of block reward. So as a reminder, the block reward is how much miners earn mining a block. And so the block reward is composed of two different um, sections, two different sources of fees. First one is the block subsidy. This is the amount of newly mined Bitcoin in each block. And this subsidy is actually cut in half every 210,000 blocks, which is roughly every four years. And that's what is known as the Bitcoin halving. But uh, the second part of the block reward are the transaction fees. And so like we've been saying, these transaction fees are paid by Bitcoin users to broadcast their transactions in the network and get it confirmed in a block in a timely manner. And so this metric fees percentage of block reward is basically the transaction fees as a percentage of the total block reward. So let's have a look at what this looks like. As you can see, very uh, similar to the mempool, you can see some spikes. Um, first one was uh, in 2017, and the second major one was in 2021. These are periods where the amount of fees that uh, miners are earning are significant compared to um, the actual block subsidy. So as you can see, back in the end of 2017, uh, this metric actually peaked at around 30%, just over 30%. And so that means that fees actually made up roughly 30% of the entire Bitcoin block reward. And as you can see in 2021, uh, fees actually peaked around 20% of the total block reward. And so this is the exact same chart here, uh, except it's zoomed in a little bit more so you can more clearly see the amount of fees that, that um, miners are earning as a percentage of the total block reward. So I hope this um, this video was helpful for you guys to to better understand like you know what is the mempool, how do transaction fees work, what are miners earning? Because so I think it's important whether you're just holding Bitcoin or you're mining Bitcoin to realize where you know the revenue comes from for miners. Um, yeah. And so I think that's it for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it or you want to get more uh, mining data analytics videos, feel free to leave in the comments, um, you know, what, what other data and analytics you want me to cover.